So for the Viber life cycle, um, so far we've uh, gone over the basics of attachment and penetration of a viral particle into a cell. And then once the viral particle has got into the cell, um, how the synthesis uh, begins of the genome of the virus and then the proteins are manufactured, the viral proteins to make the capsid. Now what we're going to look at is the, the next step. It would be the assembly, right? So the, um, it's going to be different for a variety of different types of bacteria. Um, some do things slightly different. There are a variety of different unique proteins involved. Um, but we're going to go over just some generic, ba the basic uh, mechanisms um, for assembly. Now, what you'll have is this, representing, let's say, the genome. And then we're going to have, you know, really hundreds, you know, of thousands uh, of capsomeres. So the capsid proteins. Uh, that'll be manufactured by the synthesis. So the expression of the genes from the, that virus, from its genome. Uh, one mechanism for this would say, let's say for uh, a helical capsid, would be that these capsomeres would start to assemble just really around the genome itself. Right? So you would actually start to get the capsomeres assembling and then they would grow in a particular direction it, there is a direction for this. There are other proteins that would direct it, actually, uh, in a particular way. And so, the, the, you know, these proteins would be at, coming in uh, and adding to the end, and then this would be growing, and then it would extend until you would get a complete, you know, helical capsid covering uh, and surrounding the genome. That's one, one way of doing it. For the, your icosahedral, capsids. Uh, a couple ways this could happen. So we can get sort of uh, the assembly of groups of proteins along the genome like this. And then well, maybe I'll read, yeah, highlight that here. So um, these guys like this, and then um, they start to, to fold right around it. And the genome is now inside here. And these proteins that extend out like this will then keep going and then eventually kind of seal off the genome. This will obviously be three-dimensional, but you, you kind of have the, the idea of it. So they're kind of around, again, surrounding the genome and then um, assembling into the icosahedral structure. What is uh, often even more common, though, um, is where the icosahedral is directed by a scaffold. So a scaffold assembly. With a scaffold assembly, what we're typically going to have um, is I'll have here uh, a portal protein. And then um, a scaffold protein that will attach to it. The scaffold protein will then attach to capsomeres like this. So we get portal protein, capsomere, portal protein, capsomere. Um, what am I doing? Let's see, like this, yeah, and so on. And then eventually they will come together and they'll start to build the segments of the uh, capsid, like this. Now the portal protein will be down here. And the inside would be all those scaffold proteins. Ultimately, what will happen, uh, the scaffold proteins will be removed. Okay, and so we'll pull them out. And at this point, though, they're unlike the other models, um, this is empty. This is just a, just that. Uh, this is just a shell. 
So now that portal protein uh, is going to then interact with additional um, DNA packaging motor proteins. Typically, it's an ATP ace. So a uh, protein that's going to use ATP, and then it's going to bind to the, the genome, the DNA. And the, well, let's just say it's DNA in this case. Uh, it's the genome. It could be RNA. Um, and it will bind to it. There'll be specific binding proteins. And then it will push or pump that using ATP into the capsid. So that is another way right, that this can happen. So this is now the kind of just for the, the capsid structure. Now there might be an envelope and then that would be uh, sort of through the exocytosis process where it's going to be pulling away a piece of the, the membrane. In addition to that, okay, we have our complex viruses our, that are bacteriophage. And so a complex virus is going to go through all right, uh, something very similar for this part down here. So it's going to have the uh, scaffold proteins helping build the capsid. It's going to move the genome uh, then into the capsid like this. So that's now the genome in the capsid. But if you remember um, that a bacteriophage, the complex virus has, has more to it. So typically now what we're going to see is a structure that we call a base plate. We attach to uh, a tail core like this. Then that tail core and base plate will be surrounded by the sheath, which we said is a lot more like a, a helical capsid. And that's a second structure, so that's a sheath along now with the base plate and tail core. Uh, typically, the uh, pins are already on the, the base plate. And then we start to get those coming together. So we'll get the capsid structure. And the sheath. And the base plate with the pins. All these different colors, just so you can see what I'm uh, trying to draw here. Uh, assembled like this. Now for a, a bacteriophage, there are also going to be the specific proteins or the binding proteins that are going to allow it to attach to uh, its specific host cell, all right, which are called the tail fibers. They're manufactured separately, but then the tail fibers will be attached at this final phase here, and then we get our or completed bacteriophage. Now, all these proteins, remember, have to be coded for by separate genes. So you have the um, capsomere proteins, the ones that are going to make this structure up. You'll have specific proteins that are involved in the transport, right, the DNA packaging uh, proteins. Uh, you have the tail, the core, the base plate proteins, the sheath proteins, and the tail fiber proteins. All These are all the viral genes coded for in the viral genome in addition to other sorts of things. Now, keep in mind something I didn't talk about much before, um, but I'll add this in. That a virus doesn't have its own metabolism that doesn't carry out any chemical reactions. However, there can be also inside the virus, so this would be coming in um, while the um, genome is being pulled in, in this stage sort of down here, um, you can actually have specific viral enzymes that are also packaged. into the viral particle. Now those particular viral enzymes are then going to be involved usually in um, 
it's something that the virus needs for the penetration phase. So for, if you remember, a bacterial cell has a cell wall made of peptidoglycan in addition to its cell membrane. So, and then there's the membrane. So for a bacteriophage, uh, when it attaches to a, a cell, it's gonna be specific binding to this cell wall. Um, and I'm just gonna kind of keep it one color just because it's just a little too much uh, right here. But the idea is that then some of these enzymes will be uh, something like a lysozyme For example, a lysozyme-like enzyme that can then cut through the peptidoglycan cell wall, allowing then the um, tail core to be kind of pushed down and through the cell wall, paraplasm, cell membrane area, so that then ultimately the genetic material can be inserted uh, into the cytoplasm of the bacteria. And remember again now, some of the differences. I talked previously in the, the synthesis part about um, the bacterial, uh, sorry, the viral particle either getting into the nucleus of the cell or the genetic material getting into the nucleus. That's because in that example, I was talking specifically about a eukaryotic cell and a virus that infects a eukaryotic cell. This is a uh, bacteriophage, so it's a virus that infects, pro, infects prokaryotic cells. So there is no nucleus, so the Genetic material from the virus goes directly into the cytoplasm. So it's something just to remember, you got to keep that in mind. Uh, there's a lot of different examples showing and discussing each of the different processes. And to go through all the examples for all the different types of uh, virus uh, is going to be a, a lot. So I'm just kind of giving you some specific examples uh, for ones that are well known or well, well studied. All right, and so bacteriophage are, are particularly well studied. And so that's. Uh, I'm just using this example for the assembly uh, part of it. And, but then we have that uh, extra piece of material about the DNA going into the cytoplasm. So keep in mind, some things um, have a particular perspective and that's what you, you have to remember as you're studying this material. So um, that's gonna be the oh, some overviews of assembly. Again, there's a lot of sp very specific details of the proteins themselves that are involved in all these different jobs, but that's kind of the, the concept or idea. Uh, the capsid proteins either surround the genetic material and are built around it, or they're assembled separately with a scaffold, and then afterward motor proteins pump in the genetic material, and they can bring in enzymes as well uh, in that case. And in the case of a complex virus, there's, there's still more to it, so you have all these other parts to put together. And in the case of an enveloped virus, which isn't really on here, but then you see the exocytosis, the process where that particle, after being assembled with all the genetic material, would then move toward the cell wall, sorry, the cell membrane of the eukaryotic cell. She then matrix proteins would be there, and then they would uh, facilitate a process of budding where the membrane would move out uh, word, and then the particle would be surrounded by the cell membrane with viral proteins embedded in that. So that's something separate. And that would be the release part. So that's kind of the last thing that we're going to then get into. Um, and then we'll talk about other variations of the life cycle, uh, lytic versus lysogenic.